Hello, welcome back. So today we'll, we will be installing the SCOM 1801 console on our management tool server and exploring managing and managing SCOM from a remote server. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are, we're over on my management one server um, that we've started and set up several episodes back in this series. Um, so we, we're back at the server again and we're now we're going to go ahead and install SCOM. So I have already deployed or copied over the, the media for SCOM to the server and I also have created myself a shortcut to that installation folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click install SCOM and I'm going to minimize down the server manager. All right, and uh, as, as always, this is a should be a familiar screen by now if you've been following the series for a while. So we're going to go ahead and click install. So after a few moments, we should get the setup starts. All right, so now what we want to do, um, we want to actually just install the operation console on this server so we have a way to actually manage the SCOM environment. Um, from this server and one thing you may notice here is that you may notice that you see the management server piece is actually grayed out here um, so it's actually actively blocking me from installing the management server on this server which which I don't want to do um, but the reason why we're getting that block is because a SCOM agent has actually been deployed to this server so this server um, here is actually now being monitored by a SCOM environment so um, when you have that agent there it won't let you install a management server all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do Operation Console, check that box, click Next, and I'm going to install that on my E drive. Go ahead, click Next, and then it will go through and do some various prerequisite checks and see if I meet those requirements. So here we're seeing, um, actually I failed a few of the prerequisite checks. So one of the things that I'm failing is saying I failed to report viewer controls check, I failed that. And if I click the little arrow pointing down here, it gives me more details on where I can go and download download that um, prerequisite off the internet, um, so I can um, install that and, and fulfill that prerequisite. Another thing is, is telling me about memory minimum of two gigabyte of memory required to install this feature, and a recommended amount of memory is four gig. So I, I thought I had four gig on the system, but I may be, I think I have dynamic memory on, so some of that memory may have been snatched back away from the system. So let's just take a look at my memory, how much do I actually have. So yeah, I'm sitting at a one and a half gig right now, um, be, because of, um, I believe I had a startup of four gig, but it didn't drop back down. Or I may have a startup of one and a half that it can grow to four. So since there's not heavy demand for additional memory, the system has actually released some of that memory back for other other systems to consume that. So let me, let me fix that error and then we'll be right back. All right, so what you're seeing here, so you can see now that I have that two, I'm meeting that two gigabyte limit. Um, all, all I did, so this, this is a virtual machine. I just went to the virtual machine and bumped up the amount of memory that the system is allowed to, to consume. And there we go. Um, it bumped up in the task manager pretty much right away. So I'm going to go ahead and run that prerequisite check again. So um, I'm meeting the minimum, but I don't have the recommended, so I'm still getting a warning there. But I do need to go ahead and go and install the report viewer controls. So I have um, pre-staged the files for this as well on the server. So uh, we'll go ahead and start running the installations for these. So for the report viewer, it's going to instruct you, this link will send you to the web to download report viewer 2015 and report viewer 2015 itself has some additional prerequisite that must be filled, fulfilled before you can actually install it. Um, so one of those prerequisites is the SQL sys CLR types. Um, so the link that you follow for report viewer, if you read the prerequisite for that, it will mention SQL 2014. And um, I also, I have both the SQL 2016 as well as the 2014 releases of that is installed here. And I will attempt to use this 2016 release since my SQL backend is using SQL 2016. So let's see how that goes. So, so let's go ahead and launch the installer here. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And just kind of next through all the uh, questions here. So we'll say next, set the license agreement, say next again, and then install. 
So it doesn't even give me an option to install to a certain folder, it just installs to the default locations. So that installed quickly. Let's hit finish. And now let's try to install a report viewer and see if we. So we're still missing. So this one specifically requires the 2014. So let's go ahead and go back and let's actually install the 2014. So even despite the fact that we're not using um, 2016 SQL, I mean, we're not using 2014 SQL, the report viewer itself requires 2014 SQL CLR types of function. So let's go ahead and install that. So uh, it's the exact same process that we just went through for the 2016 pieces. So let's go next, accept the license agreement, next again, and then install. So that should just take a few seconds there and then we're done. So let's click finish. And let's go try the report viewer 2015 again. And let's say run and say next and read the licenses terms, accept that, next. So it looks like the installer is a lot happier now. So it looks like it definitely needs the 2014 um, pieces um, despite of whatever version of SQL you're actually running for the report viewer pieces. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind as you're installing this. So let's go ahead and click install. So that should just take a moment here to fully install and we're done. So go ahead, click finish. And then I'm gonna minimize this windows back down. And then I'm gonna back in the operation manager setup, I'm just gonna try to verify those prerequisites again and see if we're in better shape now. Verify prerequisites again. So now, now we're much better. So um, we're still getting a little warning here because I don't have um, the four gig recommended amount of memory on the system, but that, that's okay for, for now. I, I should still be able to continue with the installation. Now I'll go ahead and say next. And then go ahead, accept the licensing terms. Say next. Um, again, this familiar screen about data collection. Say next. I'm not gonna allow automatic updates. Go next. And then it's just giving me a summary of what it's about to do and where it's gonna install it and hit install. So this may take a few minutes to install, but after it completes, we'll, we'll, I'll be right back. All right, so that's installed successfully. It didn't take very long at all, actually. It was probably actually less than a minute um, for it to install at least on this system. Um, so um, now what we can do, we can actually launch Microsoft Update and see if there's any available updates on, on the web available or we can um, allow it to um, launch the operation console once the wizard closed. So I'm gonna leave that checkbox check and allow it to open the console once I close this wizard. And let's go ahead and close the wizard. And then let's also like close down the operation manager installer. So there we go. So um, the console is now installed and it's launching. So now I have an option here to actually go ahead and specify a server or SCOM management server to connect to. So if you recall, um, we now have two SCOM management servers in, in this environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to connect to SCOM1. So let's go SCOM1. Um, I also have a SCOM2. Uh, so I can connect through either one of those um, through this me me method. So I'm gonna hit, go ahead, click connect. And assuming that I don't have any firewall blocking issues, I should be able to connect up to that. And there we go. So now I'm connected to my new management group. So you can see up here, we can see the name, Lewis Tech Views dash SAC dash prod. Over here on the right, I can see the monitoring overview information. So it gives me some options where I should go and configure various different features, um, upgrade to the full version. So uh, like install my license if I have one. And then now here on state and alerts, I can see that I have two healthy computers. Um, so that would be my two management servers that have been um, added to the environment. So um, hopefully this session, this video session has been useful. Um, we have a, effectively our connecting and manager in our management group on our remote management tool server using the SCOM console. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.